All right, physics peeps. Now we're going to combine everything together and we're going to solve all this problem. The key is that you're going to continue to use these three main equations, V equals D over T and V equals VI times T plus one half AT squared. And VF equals VI plus A times T. We're going to use all three of those problems in or equations in this problem, and we have to solve out for all three of these things. The key is organizing all your stuff uh, and doing those three steps to set up the problem, and then you uh, need to know when to use these equations, when not to use them. So let's set it up. This is problem number one. And <clears throat> we started off because this is going at an angle. It's not in a straight line originally. We're going to split it up, x and y. That's step one. Step two, list the initial speeds. Because the cannonball, it's fired horizontally to the right off a cliff at a speed of 90 meters per second. The cliff is 4.5 meters high. Ignore air resistance. We have to solve for all this stuff. But it's horizontally at 90 meters per second. So the initial speed on the horizontal part, x, is 90 meters per second. But y, the initial speed, is 0 meters per second because this is the vertical side. And, and it's not shot up or down at an angle. But now we have to tell what's going on in each of these cases. So horizontally, we pretend like it follows this path. It goes off in a straight line because gravity is not pulling it down. No air resistance. It's moving at a constant speed. It's like watching it go out into space. And then vertically, we pretend like it follows this path. If it goes straight down and gravity pulls it down, and because gravity is pulling it down, it's accelerating at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So those are our three steps to set it up. And now we can solve these out. And you can solve them out in almost any order that you want to. But we're going to start with this one. Range. So range, remember, it's a horizontal distance. It's dx. So we solve for it on the x side. And but because it's moving at a constant speed, it's not accelerating. We have to use an equation that does not have acceleration in it. And it's this one, the top one. So to solve for range, I'm going to use this equation. V equals d over t. Don't cross over your problems and keep these things separated. Some of the biggest things that tend to happen during these problems is when people start to kind of mush things together and don't keep these separated. And then the things tend to crash. But you need to show all your work for it. You need to copy down the problem because it's this groove. And once you get into the groove, you'll end up kind of being able to solve this out pretty easily. Okay? So I know this equation is what I use on this side to solve for the range, it's that horizontal distance. But I need to put in information for both of these things to solve for that distance. So the speed doesn't matter if it's one second, two seconds, 100 seconds later, it's more like constantly at 90 meters per second. So it's 90 for the speed. And then the distance, I'm going to keep it as D because I'm solving for it. And the time, oh no, the time, we don't know what the time is. So, oh, remember, I can go over to the other side to solve out for that time. But I need an equation to solve for time on this side. And because it's accelerating on this side, I need equations that have acceleration in them. So I can choose between these two, but it's this one, the middle one, that I use to solve for time because I know the distance that it's falling. It falls 4.5 meters high, or it falls 4.5 meters, one half. T squared. So I'm going to write out the equation. I'm not going to forget the T squared, all that kind of stuff. So because it, uh, that vertical distance is 4.5, but it falls 4.5, I make this negative and put that in place of D. The initial speed, it is zero. T 
times the time. That's what I'm going to solve for. Plus 1 half, or you can use 0 0.5, times the acceleration. It's negative 9.8. times the time squared. That's what I'm going to solve for is t. But now I can go through and simplify some things. 0 times t, I can cross that out. And then this I can also simplify 1 half times negative 9.8. So I'm going to leave this as negative 4.5 equals this is negative 4.9 times t squared. But to get t by itself, I need to divide by negative 4.9 on both sides. And now I can cross out negative 4.9 on this side. And if I do the math, negative 4.5 divided by negative 4.9, I get this t squared equals 0 0.918. That's not my answer. That is t squared. I need a square root, both sides. And I get t, I'm going to kind of move it over here. t equals, and if I do that, again, if you get something slightly different, 0 0.958. And so this time, that's not one of my answers. Remember, I needed to come over here to solve for time so I could get the range. It's time, that's the only thing that can go between both sides of this problem. So I can put that 0 0.958 back on this side. To solve for the distance, I need to multiply it by 0 0.958 on both sides. 0.958 goes away on this side, and I end up with my range. It's a horizontal distance, so I label it dx is equal to 86.25. And because I solve for a distance, it's in meters. I box it. That is my range. And I know it's my range because I labeled it dx. And so, letter A, I solved that out. I can solve these other pieces out too. Horizontal speed, vertical speed. And, and some of these can go by pretty quick because the horizontal speed, well, it's horizontal. I solve for it on the X side, but my speed is constant. So if it started at 90, my horizontal speed is just that. I can just do this. Vx equals 90 meters per second. Huzzah. That's another answer taken care of. And then determine the vertical speed of the cannonball on impact with the ground. And so if I solve for this one, <clears throat> I need to solve for it on the vertical side. It has to be on the y side. But because it's accelerating, I need an equation to solve for this speed. Well, it has to have acceleration in it. Well, that's between these two equations. But this one solves out for speed. I can use Vf equals Vi plus A times T. And the initial speed, it is zero. Plus the acceleration, it's negative 9.8. Times the time, and the time, ah, oh, nuts. They took, wait a second, I got the time right here. I already did that. I can actually use this back in this equation. Oh my gosh, so nice. So 0 0.95. And now I can multiply these things together. And I get from my vertical speed, I label it Vy, 0.958 times negative 9.8. I get negative 9.38. So again, for your answers, uh, go out one or two decimals. That is perfect. And and we end up with this. A couple things when you solve these problems out. Make sure you label what it is that you solve for because you need to know what you solve for. Vx, that's your horizontal speed. Vy, that's your vertical speed. And uh, dx, this is your range because it's a horizontal distance. And 
Also, make sure that you are separating out all your information. Keep your X stuff separate from your Y stuff. The things that tend to get people in, what makes it really frustrating is some people will always solve this out first and then kind of go into this routine of like, well, solve this out and then do this and then do this. That's okay sometimes. Sometimes you can do this in a different order though. Notice that we really could have answered horizontal speed right off the bat. We didn't need to necessarily do all this work in order to solve it out. But we did need to figure out that time to solve out for the vertical speed. And so there's kind of that part. And then um, make sure that your information, like your initial speeds, are not mixing up. Your initial speed on the X side is on, uh, we saw for everything on the X side over here because this is our initial speed on the X side. We saw for all our Y stuff over here so that we're putting in the initial speed of zero because that's on the Y side or the vertical information. So it's a little tricky. You guys will rock at it though. Make sure you talk to your teacher if you have questions, but make sure that you are showing your work. It's not for me, it is for you, all right? See ya.